Another aspect of uh, the design we looked at when we did the five series was rudder design. We'd studied a lot of rudders and how rudders fail, and you learn a lot by looking at failed rudders, and uh, we certainly supply a lot of replacement rudders to boats in the field, up to boats that are 40, 45 years old, we've supplied rudders. And often we get the old rudder back because the customer asks if we can reuse the core. Sometimes you can't. I can. Most of the times you cannot. But it's a great opportunity to look at how a rudder fails. And most rudders fail in two modes, either frontal impact or compression, meaning the boat bounces up and down on a sandbar or a rock and the skin's split that way. So we really looked at how we could make that rudder stronger and prevent that from happening. And that led us to two things. One, if you have a seam on the center line and the trailing edge of a rudder, it's very difficult to make that joint strong. Um, it's also very difficult to finish that to the proper, proper radius you want a leading edge of a rudder for efficiency. So our change was to mold in the leading edge of the rudder and make the joint back a couple inches from the leading edge. So that led to the idea of, well, um, what kind of plate are we going to put in there? Uh, most rudders used to have a uh, plate uh, welded to the post. It was just a flat plate, often had per perforations, but when you have a post and you weld a plate to it, you know, that's pretty easy to bend that back or forth and break that weld joint. So the thought was, well, when I've got this major skin and a minor skin, let's make the rudder blade Instead of doing a blade, let's do a web structure in there. And so we took that post, this is looking at in plan view now, and welded um, a plate to one side, straps to one side, straps at the other side, and joined them with a plate right here. Well, what that created is the triangle. Triangles are very good shape structurally because you can't deform a triangle without breaking one of the joints. So these are extremely strong, but lighter than a, a full plate rudder. And we don't have a, a, a vulnerable weld, but weld right on the, on the rudder blade itself. And what we do when we put this rudder uh, weldment inside the rudder skins is we heavily glass the one that's on co in contact with the major skin, which would be in this case the skin. We heavily glass that with um, what we call horse hairs, which are long glass fibers, we weave through that um, part of the weldment until we achieve a good attachment to the um, to the blade on the opposite side. And there may maybe be a big bundle of these strands that get attached to the major skin. Well, the beauty of this is we've now attached the rudder core to the rudder blade skin. Every other rudder in the world, and we used to make them is a bit like, uh, think of a uh, stick in a popsicle. Um, you just put the stick in, the popsicle freezes, and the only thing holding that stick in place is, att is attachment to the, to, the, to the ice on the inside. Well, that's okay for popsicles, but not so good for rudders. Because uh, the way everyone built rudders is you'd have the symmetrical skins, put the core in there, pour foam in, slam it closed, and that was the attachment. The foam held the core in place. We wanted to get away from that, so that's why we heavily glass these. The reason for that is, especially in freezing climates, if you ground the boat, just tap the bottom, and you don't have this attached to the skin, you break this little bond right at the top, right? Well, all rudders are underwater, up to there. And once you make a little fissure right here, water enters that, right? Any air that's in there, or any void that's created, immediately fills with water because the hydraulic pressure fills it up with water. Then you haul that boat, it goes through a couple of freeze-thaw cycles, each time expanding that crack, each time attacking this little weldment, right, this weldment right here, which, you know, those kind of welds don't like to be encapsulated, especially if they're trapped in water, and eventually the rudder will fail. And you have no exterior warning it's going to fail unless you see a little bit of rust weeping out of the bottom of the blade, as you'll see in some older rudders. That doesn't happen to these rudders. All the foam does on these rudders is exclude water. Foam is basically along for the ride. It makes it a little bit stiffer, helps join the two skins, but its structural component is very, very minor. It's not holding the rudder together. So we've got a couple levels of safety in this rudder. We've got um, this, this weldment inside, very strong instead of just the plate. 
we attach this, physically attach these to the major skin. And the beauty of that is if you hit the bottom of the rudder, it breaks away, you're still going to have enough raggedy skin attached to that blade to steer the boat. These rudders are designed, the, the weldment only goes down about 60%, 66% of the depth. The bottom of the rudder is fairly light you should, with the intent that this will be a breakaway piece. You could, you could actually break away that part of the rudder and still have enough to steer the boat. So you've got really a couple different levels of safety. That coupled with a very heavy stainless steel post. All these posts are double walled at least 10 inches up into the hull. On many of the boats, that double wall goes all the way up to the deck. So the fact that these are very difficult to bend these posts, the rudder, if you break the skin away, you're still going to have something attached. You could break away the bottom of the third of the rudder. We tried to build a number of different levels of safety into rudders because the rudder is one thing, it's probably the last thing you want to lose on a boat. You have some control if you lose the mast, but if you lose the rudder, you have no control.